Hey, Lois, your friendly graduate assistant. Let's take a few minutes and talk about the types of quantitative research, basically give you an overview. Now, there's two major factions of research. There's quantitative research, which is number-based, and there's qualitative research, which is interview-based. When you get into the quantitative research, which is, of course, dealing with numbers, you have two um, major categories, experimental and non-experimental, or correlate correlational research. Uh, in the experimental, you have true experimental and quasi-experimental. Um, true experimental is where you have a control group and a group with variables. Quasi-experimental is uh, anything besides that. When you look at experimental research, you have two or more conditions, treatment levels, which are manipulated, and the researcher, you, observes the effects on these manipulations uh, on one or more outcomes. There's a dependent variable and an independent variable, basically. Your objective in experimental research is to make causal inferences, uh, inferences and uh, it's common in natural laboratory experiments. It's difficult in the real world because you can't always control for everything. The data analysis in experimental research will involve comparing treatment groups in terms of the outcome of interest. True experimental research, the subjects are randomly assigned to treatment groups before the treatment is offered. This is what's known as random assignment. In true experimental research, causal inferences is more naturally made. In most social, behavior, and educational research, random assignment just isn't impo is, is impossible, um, and sometimes you can't do it because of ethical considerations. In quasi-experimental research, the researcher has limited control over randomization. Um, despite the lack of randomization, there is evidence that differential treatment is occurring at each of the treatment groups. In data analysis, the researcher attempts to control for confounding variables. Basically, confounding variables are variables that might influence what you're studying, but you're not studying those particular variables. Um, so the researcher attempts to control for the confounding variables in order to isolate the effect of treatment on the outcome variable. Now, there's also a measure of validity when you're doing uh, quantitative. Um, you have internal validity, which is the extent to which observed differences or relationships are a result of the treatment of the in independent variables. Basically making sure that the independent variables are the ones that are causing the differences. Random assignment, making sure your um, sample is random, plays an extremely important role in the internal validity. You also have external validity, which is the extent to which results from a study can be generalized to wider settings or populations. Basically making sure that you know your little study uh, is applicable to big groups of whatever you're studying. Random sampling as well plays an important role in the external validity. In non-experimental research, sometimes it's called correlational research. Basically, rather than comparing groups, the research is attempting to determine the relationship between and among variables. Often the study attempts to determine the extent to which a set of either independent or predictor variables can predict another dependent or outcome variable. Survey research involves collecting data from participants using a survey instrument. Questionnaire structured interview schedule, schedule where participants provide answers, opinions, perceptions, or attitudes on some topic or issue. Most survey research are non-experimental, quasi-experimental in nature. Survey research is really common in social behavior and educational research. You've probably taken a survey or even issued you some on your own. That's quantitative and survey research. Now, sample survey involves collecting data from sample participants who have been selected randomly to represent a particular population. Sample participants are assumed to be representative of the population where they were selected from. Census surveys involve collecting data from all participants in the entire population. So a sample survey could be something um, at the mall. I'm sure everybody's encountered those, those mall surveys, and they're assuming that that's representative just about everyone in that group that they're studying. And the census survey, well, just like the name implies, it's everyone in the population. Uh, you have cross-sectional research, which uses data that is collected from a sample of participants at a single point in time. Basically, if you go to, let's say, a classroom and do a survey on this one particular day, that's cross-sectional research.
Longitudinal research uses data that's collected from the same, 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 same sample participants at multiple time points. So if you go to that same class and interview them in first grade, then that same class second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, that's longitudinal research. The method is useful for studying nature of change over time.